Welcome to the next panel of the International Music Forum, Selector Pro 2022. This session is titled New Ways of Working Together, where the guests will share the new ways of cooperation within the industry, the ways that they have discovered uh, during the past years, during the pandemic that left us very few tools to continue cooperating together, especially on the international level. And they will also share their successes and challenges that they've encountered along the way. This session, as well as the uh, International Music Forum Selector Pro, is brought to you by British Council Ukraine and Music Expert Ukraine, with the aim to strengthen connections between the music sectors of the United Kingdom, Ukraine, South Caucasus, Western Balkans, and Central Asia, to create relevant educational opportunities for artists, managers, as well as music event organizers, and to support the growth of new talent, and to promote effective business processes in the music industry. My name is Tatiana Studnik. I'm going to moderate this uh, panel on behalf of Music Expert Ukraine. And here with me today are four guests, uh, which, I, which I have the honor to introduce. So here with me are today Ira Lobanok from Ukraine. Ira is uh, a musician, sound producer, educator, cultural manager, Ira has been working on several projects throughout the past years, but for instance, she produced a program for an international residency for female producers, musicians, songwriters, and managers titled She Makes Music, which was founded by Ukrainian Cultural Foundation. Next, uh, here with me today is Kate Lois uh, from the UK. She is the head of Programs and Development in Brighter Sound, um, a music charity that supports and champions young and early career musicians and industry professionals. Uh, Kate has worked in the music industry for over 15 years as a performer uh, in community-focused work as art, uh, in artist development and more recently as a researcher. Next, um, Gareth Stewart from Ireland. He is a co-founder of Teltronic Festival and uh, Music City Dairy. Today, Gareth will share the asset, ethos behind the two festivals, which is not-for-profit, music first. And our last guest, uh, last but not least, is uh, Mohammed Abod, um, aka DJ Mo City from India. DJ Mo City is an award-winning selector and promoter and co-founder of South Asia's first online community radio, Box Out FM a platform to support underrepresented independent and alternative culture in India and across the region. So as you see, we have quite an international panel and what connects all these people is not just love for music and the music industry, but also the fact that they have all worked on unique projects they ha that have utilized various tools that have left to our usage as of pandemic and we will be chatting today sharing the best practices and the know-how from these projects. We will start with just short presentation overview of the project, uh, what brought you to the idea and the first question is what was your project about? What did it look like? And uh, I would like to invite Kate to take the floor. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we worked with um, Ira um, so, um, on a project called She Makes Music. Uh, the focus of the work was bringing together uh, female trans and non-binary artists from Manchester and the North of England with artists from Ukraine uh, with the intention of working collaboratively to create new work uh, and to supporting an emerging team of managers to um to sort of curate that process and release that music as well so in, in a nutshell that's what we were doing Ira, i don't know if you want to add add on to that a little bit 
I think you you were great. <laughs> um, yeah. So one of our ideas was that um, you know the, that uh, during the pandemic the borders are kind of non-existent, and you can you know collaborate with anyone. And we just wanted to introduce that kind of method uh, to um, the participants of the residency, and so they can take it on uh, later on and. Uh, carry on, you know, uh, collaborating together and just knowing that this is a legit way of collaborating online and that, you know, the borders and uh, cannot, cannot stop them creating. Lovely. The borders cannot stop them and they cannot stop us creating as well. Uh, let's see what has been taking place in Ireland. So, Gareth, uh, introduce your project. Okay, so uh, thanks for having us today. Um, so I am the festival director of Celtronic. We are a festival in the northwest of Ireland, a uh, city called Derry, which is probably about 100,000 people. And we set up our festival 21 years ago, uh, almost as a antithesis or an opposite to all the other festivals at the time, which were focused on profit and massive stages and large audiences. We wanted to do the opposite. So it would be not focused on profit. That would be about small venues, but major artists, small venues up close. So that it would be a more intimate, uh, rewarding, rewarding experience for both uh, the audience and for the artist. Um, we became aware of the British Council's uh, uh, connections program uh, with India, and we did a lot of research around um, the various electronic music festivals that exist there. And I was blown away by the scale of the scene there and the scale of the festivals. But I suppose what we were looking for as a partner was uh, somebody or some organization that was uh, more community focused and more about emerging artists. And luckily we became uh, we were able to connect with uh, Mohammed and the Box Out FM crew and uh, it was just perfect and that um, we're on the same wavelength and we were into the same sounds or a diversity of sounds really and um, I suppose we were able to connect during the pandemic. Initially we'd hoped to maybe visit uh, New Delhi and for a uh, contingent from India to visit here but the pandemic put paid to that so we had to find new ways of working and I suppose the technology that exists enabled us to do that but what we wanted to do was I suppose as we got into mid to late 2020 there was saturation in the amount of online streaming and we really didn't want to do something that was DJs or artists playing in their bedrooms, which we'd seen too many times for the previous months. And we also wanted to do something that uh, maybe give those people in New Delhi that had never been to Derry before an experience of what our city looked like or what it was. And for people in Derry to get an idea what New Delhi looked like. So that was probably our... Uh, one of our main aims is to give a, like a visual connection to the city. So a, a lot of our streams featured footage of those those areas uh, and the, 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 those cities. So just they, they just they take it up a level. So I don't know if Mohammed's anything else to add to that, but it's been a great experience and great to, great even to be in a conversation with yourselves in Ukraine today. Uh, it's just great that how you can have conversations these days with people and far off places doing the same things. Mohammed, go ahead. Uh, let us know how it was on your side. Yeah, first of all, thank you all for being here. Thanks for having us. Really excited to be here and discuss uh, how our projects went and learned from each other. I guess uh, the collaboration with Gareth and the Keltronic team, it was it, it started off with an email. I just I just landed in Dubai for a show. And I receive an email saying, oh, we, would you guys want to collaborate on this project that potentially is going to happen? And then I was like, yeah, why not? Filled up the, kind of got back in touch with Gareth. And next thing you know, uh, the lockdown is kind of extended. 
the lockdown is happening, the lockdown is ongoing, and we as a kind of community-run platform were heavily focused on uh, ticketed events to support the radio station. We also run a festival that's headlined by Indian artists to support the Indian artist and, and the radio station. So when all of that disappeared, we were just kind of uh, stuck broadcasting from various locations. And for one year, up till the time we did our collaboration, everything was being done from the studio or bedrooms or home studios. And it was the first actual broadcast we could do from a physical location, which was the, the, the iconic Kutub Minar in New Delhi. And we, we assembled a team. We went there at 6 a.m. and we shot this uh, amazing uh, set of uh, performances by Indian artists that kind of represent the sounds that both Keltronic and Box Out of M champion. So there was a big synergy in terms of the vibe of the music. And yeah, we recorded those. And next thing you know, the second wave hit and boom, those streams became iconic again because uh, people couldn't go out again. And I think the collaboration at that time gave a lot of the local and young artists uh, that uh, support they needed, whether it's financial or whether like just being on a legit platform on a global scale supported by the British Council, it gave them that boost to go on another year facing this pandemic and uh, doing their best to stay functional. Mohamed, you mentioned that it all started with an email. And indeed, these days, it's so easy to spark cooperation. You just send an email over to a potential partner and just hope for their interest. But how do you actually then work online? How do you build a team? How do you manage people? And uh, I'm putting this question uh, back to Gareth and Mohamed, but then I would love also Kate and Ira to take over and speak about how they managed in their project. I think uh, just uh, like how, how we started from the maybe not so regular email chains to weekly calls with agendas and uh, tasks list and uh, ideating around the artists we want to work with, sharing resources online, uh, being a bit, uh, I guess, uh, in, in communication throughout the period before the production of the, the festival. And... Uh, I think the weekly calls helped. Uh, eventually, we were able to kind of assemble a team of freelance producers, designers, and artists to help us produce everything since our original team has wasn't operational at the time. But the weekly calls definitely kept everything in, in check and a lot of Google Drive links floating around. Uh, Gareth, I don't know what, what you thought. Yeah, no, it was, um, I suppose, just from that email... And then it, it becomes real. And I suppose for us and for the artists from Derry, you know, that was a great opportunity to showcase their sounds to um, those in, uh, um, in India that they um, would never have had the chance before they, they showcased their sound to. So everybody was like... Um, Super excited and really brought the brought their A game to the to the performances you know, because I suppose they were thinking here is you know, New Delhi's one of the biggest cities in the world, the box out FM, great following, great uh, platform to get their sounds showcased to such a massive audience and the potential maybe someday of getting to perform out there. You know, that's a, it was a great opportunity. And again, just we're, we know we've we're, we're just been keeping in touch and trying to work up uh, future plans. And again, like the the local artists, know just uh, I think they have. I suppose myself and Mohammed have connected in the Box Out FM team. But I think there's them being connections between the artists below, the uh, below ourselves to put it together that they performed that they've been connecting separately. So it's just uh it's definitely been great, you know, especially especially where we're at. You know, we're like at the. The far northwest of Europe, next stop's America. You know, you can't get as far west. Uh, we're, set, we're maybe disconnected from the global scene at times, but just the, the, the chance of using technology to connect the, the global scene just is, has been great. It's been one of the, the plus things of this, um, this uh, pandemic. And I suppose what we've been trying to do with young artists and young producers and musicians uh, coming up, it's time to get them to think 
outside of Derry. No, it's not about getting a gig in Derry. It's about getting a gig in Kiev. It's a get about a gig in Delhi. It's about getting a gig in Berlin. Don't get sometimes people here get caught up on getting a gig in their local town. Whereas now, because of the the world's a smaller place, it's just as easy to get a gig in New Delhi as it is to get a gig five hundred meters away from your home and in, in your own in your own town. So I suppose that 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 has been uh, inspirational for local artists and they're all itching to for the world to open up and get touring and get getting out there and connecting in person. It sounds like you were able to expand the perception of the artists and the professionals that you were working with towards the global one, uh, even despite the pandemic. But um, I would like to ask Kate and Ira about um, how you assembled the team and Perhaps if you want to come back to how it all started, how your cooperation started, that would be also very interesting to know. And then how things developed. Uh, how did you recruit people to work with you? And how did you manage the team? Yeah, so uh, I guess back in uh, January last year, I have connected with uh, Brighter Sound uh, via email, just pitching the idea uh, about the uh, possible residency. And uh, they have replied. We had a quick call. And uh, yeah, it was like we were on the same page. So that's how it started. You know, it was like we have same values, really similar like view of the problems that are there and that we can probably like solve. Um, and um, yeah, that, that was, you know, uh, just just a merge of, I don't know, um, our ideas and uh, desires to make the world you know, better. Uh, so yeah, that started that way. And then we wrote the um, uh, the pro proposal for the Ukrainian, Ukrainian uh, Cultural Foundation. And we won. Actually, we won. Uh, we, we got the first place um, out of all the Ukrainian British programs. And that gave us more power to um, develop the pro project. Um, and yeah, afterwards, I guess we were um, like keeping in touch via emails and sometimes having calls for more uh, complicated things to talk about, like the design of uh, all the posters of, you know, the visual part. So that's something that you have to consider so that, you know, our, our values and our vision is um, in you know, uh, merged together with the vision of Brighter Sound. That's like important to uh, take care of. And um, after that, that was the recruitment process that we divided, like, I guess, equally. So we would recruit uh, 15 people from Ukraine and uh, Kate and Brighter Sound would uh, recruit 15 people, participants from the UK. And also the same process would go for recruiting uh, lecturers. So the, we would recruit half and uh, Kate would recruit half. And Kate was so brilliant at recruiting people. Like she was so quick. She's like, I know exactly who who is good for that role. So I was like really inspired by um, how she handled um, all the processes, like because she has much more uh, experience. And I was really happy to learn from Kate as well. <laughs> Thank you, Ira. And likewise, I was really, I feel like really benefited from working with you and, and learned a lot too. And I think it's really interesting how you spoke there at the start about how important those shared values were and that we came from it from like, you know, different, maybe slightly different sort of cultural perspectives, but absolutely recognising that there are issues that need to be addressed. And um, at Brighter Sound, we've been doing a lot of work around gender equality for the last sort of four or five years, running quite a large scale initiative across the north of England. Um, but, this, and it, and it, but it felt to me that despite how much work you do, there is just always more to do. It's a constant um, it's, it's a sort of constant battle, really, against defaulting to that status quo where uh, equality is concerned. Um, and uh, so I think one in terms of sort of assembling the team and, and in relation to what Ira just said, I think we're quite lucky that because we've done a lot of work around gender equality, we've got quite, and while we didn't work exclusively with um, female lecturers or um 
contributors to the program. Uh, we did have quite a strong bank of women who we'd worked with previously, um, women non-binary and trans people who have contributed and helped to um, sort of shape the program. And I think what when when you start working around gender equality, that that was one of the biggest challenges that we found actually that the, the sort of more visible people and more established sort of names in the industry can very often be male so sort of just uncovering all those sort of amazing um uh, women doing brilliant things perhaps a little bit more under the under the radar has been a really uh, great thing to do and uh yeah celebrate that must be a very rewarding feeling thinking of a project and then thinking of the people for who that project is a perfect match and just coming there with an offer and saying I have this perfect offer for you are you going to to ride this um this uh train with me <laughs> and just have them join the team and assemble the 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 team of wonderful people and professionals especially when it's another chance to showcase them once again in the in the industry um I would like to now ask you about the recruitment of participants. And this is also something that Gareth has already mentioned. And we all know that at some point things stopped. Nobody knew what to do and there were the projects were on hold. But then at, the, at some point we all felt the oversaturations of, of new projects coming in, especially in the online space. Um, how did you battle with it? What was so unique about your project that... Um, made people join uh, when there are so many other offers um, around. And I will pass the floor to Gareth. And then um, would be great if Mohammed will follow up with his vision of how things worked in this project. Uh, thanks. I suppose everything we do uh, pre-pandemic and during the pandemic, um, when we're putting the lineup together, is to try and identify those artists that are maybe deserving of the slot or deserving of the the stage. Uh, and what we really look for is those know that um, that the music is their life, that that's what no, they're really, no, there's, I don't know if it's the same where you are, there's, uh, uh, there's several different types of artists. There's maybe artists that are there for the party, they're there for, they get beer or whatever at the weekend and have great fun and there's nothing wrong with that. There's there people that are there, there maybe to get the boys or get the girls or whatever. But then there's other the, the real artists that we're looking for is those that it's it means everything for them. It's they're doing it seven days a week. They're at home doing it. We're just we're always looking for that. And our artists uh, uh and I suppose as the years developed, we you know it's getting you no know, it got to a stage where everybody was a DJ. No, there there was too many DJs. So now we're maybe focus on more focusing more on the producer and those producers that are willing or experimenting with live performance to the try and you know, how do you especially coming from a place like Derry, how do you get noticed when there's a million DJs in the world? Well you're gonna to have to have a live be a live artist also. And how are you gonna be make yourself be noticed among a million live artists? then you're going to have to have a great live show. So it's just time to encourage that. And we've been building that over the last few years. So for our um, collaboration with Box Out, all our artists were uh, live performers. Uh, and again, as I said earlier, they all brought their, their A-game to it. And it wasn't just a matter of turning up and press and play. No, they were working for weeks in advance of it and really putting effort in and making something really special that could love beyond that weekend when we done it. And I suppose it's almost like a, an advertisement or a promotional tool for themselves for future gigs. So again, that's that's probably where we've in recent years been edging towards you know, noticing that there's maybe too many DJs and it's very difficult to differentiate between all the DJs. So maybe focus more on live electronic artists and those that are putting together great live shows rather than just a laptop and press and play. That's so you've you picked a niche and you decided to move forward in that way. Yeah, that's a I suppose that that we're trying to always be on the edge or trying to push it further you know the, the easy option would be 
just to program DJs and do the same lineup over and over again, but just to try and uh, grow the scene here. And the, we have noticed just in recent years the, that the, the young people coming through, they are thinking about live and performing live, whereas when I was younger, it was all about being a DJ. That's what it was about. But I suppose people now realise how this industry works. It's not It's not enough just to be a DJ anymore. You have to be able to offer something else. So that's that's where we're at in recent years. And Noted. Mohammed, what was unique, what stood out for you the most? What do you think attracted the people to join? I guess... Uh... What stood out the most is the the kind of the location which we had selected and the kind of artists that we did program. We asked the producers and the, some of the electronic artists to assemble a live band version of their performance. So two of the artists who are signed to the label, they assembled a band and they performed a three, four piece electronica live kind of performance, dubby breaks and it was the first time those artists were seen in this live environment we definitely had also djs on the lineup we had uh, we had to also we we were we were working very hard towards uh, a balanced lineup of artists so because at that time there weren't many people in delhi a lot of people had left to goa for the season during that time when we were filming uh, our one of more, our more most uh, like uh, challenging uh, aspects was having that balanced lineup between male and female artists. But we did uh, our best. We had the Coven Code members, which is a femme collective based in Delhi, participate in the lineup. And two of those artists have now released music on the label. We had uh, various singers appear as part of the live performance. So we did. Uh, we also do always work towards creating a, a space for everyone. And so I feel that that kind of stood out from the generic male-only DJ lineups that were appearing at the time during the pandemic here in India. And that was, uh, that was great to see. I think everyone can watch back the performances and uh, enjoy a bit of uh, New Delhi underground sounds. Congratulations to that. And especially, as you say, that uh, it, it's been a season when it, it was much more difficult when people were leaving Delhi at the moment. Um, I would like to ask Ira, what stood out to you about your project that you were doing together with Kate and why it was so unique and uh, people were interested to join and to be a part of it? Mm. Um, yeah, so it was quite easy for us in Ukraine because we don't currently have too many projects for female artists um, alone. So uh, that's why like, we instantly got a lot of uh, response from musicians. So we were looking for musicians, um, sound producers and managers. And we had like, uh, even though we had space for about, I think, um, six musicians we received like eight replies um to that and um, it was a bit harder with sound producers because there is not that many uh, female sound producers yet uh, we're working on it and uh, also managers uh so that was harder to achieve uh but overall um yeah basically we we were lucky that I mean, in a way, uh, to attract more people because uh, we don't have that many uh, projects uh, for female musicians, sound producers and managers in Ukraine. So, yeah, and I guess this is like the, we need to address that because we don't have that many um, women in music in Ukraine. And I guess that's the, the, the statistics for the world as well. I, I love how you're saying we don't yet have uh, that many women in this specific jobs um, in the music music industry, but we're working on it. Uh, Kate, what about you? What helped you uh, to recruit participants? Yeah, I think um, I, I totally agree with what Ira was saying. And even though there is quite a sort of developed conversation around equality in music, um, I still think that having an all-female space or a, a safe space that recognises the needs of people of marginalised genders is 
is really important and there is a big need for it. Um, I also think just generally from my experience working with artists and in the evaluation we've subsequently done with the She Makes Music group, that there's um, that there's a, a real value placed on having sort of time and space to sort of focus on your music so you know a lot of people are doing music often with another job alongside to sort of um particularly when you're transitioning into a professional career um so yeah the the sort of um legitimate excuse to take time and space out of your schedule to really focus on on what you're doing with your music is really feels really important and that comes up time and time again for us I also think um, the value around international exchange with artists is a really, really important area. Um, and, and and similarly with collaboration as well, you know, when for artists, well, the majority of artists we work with are very collaboratively minded because that's the way that our programme process works. But uh, it felt really um it felt really tangible with this group. And in fact, one of the things that um, ERA implemented, which was really lovely at the start, the very first session that we did, was very much focusing on skills for collaboration, particularly when you're not in the same space. And although all the participants from UK Crane had incredible um, English language skills and put all of us to shame from the UK, um, the fact that we weren't in the same space and there may have been occasional um, language barriers uh, does make it sort of slightly harder to read the dynamics sometimes. So uh, the first session that ERA programmed was around um, collaboration and exploring what that means in an online space and to sort of giving the group tools and language to feel comfortable and confident about expressing themselves and their and their needs in this sort of quite vulnerable space even though like we you know we talk about it being a safe space but also you know expressing your self and your artistic vision and ideas with you know musicians who you've only just met is there's obviously a big aspect of vulnerability to that so that was a really um a, a really lovely so sort, of, sort of set the project on a on a lovely tone really and and made a big difference I think in the way that the group worked together and um and moved forward with their ideas to create such amazing tracks. As you were describing, I felt myself just being in that space. And the things that you were mentioning, they are the simple things and the basic ones that we forget about, uh, the space and time to create music, being focused, and um, the safe space, space where you can just share with uh, your colleagues or people who are coming from the same industry. Um, such simple things, hard to create, hard to facilitate, I have to say. Um, and we tend to forget about it, how much of a difference it can make in, in one person's career or even life. Well, now I would like to talk about challenges. Uh, what kind of challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? And I will come back to Ira with the question. Right. Um... One of the challenges was, as um, Kate mentioned, um, that we couldn't always, because we were all working online and sometimes groups were creating tracks on their own. They would need to like organize uh, their own time. So not everything was uh, within the um, educational hours. They would go and um, um, organize their little me meetings and production sessions uh, together. So And we couldn't be there. So we couldn't see and like um, maybe solve some issues that were within the groups and then sometimes the uh, the participants would i don't know have some like issues with like the, the different um characters meet and they you know don't usually don't always like find the common language straight away especially because it's online and it's harder to read people so in that those cases we would need to resolve those questions but it was quite you know it, it wasn't like anything like super complicated it's just like normal things but uh, if that would be within the offline thing it would be easier to notice and like resolve quicker. Uh, so those are one of the things that we have to constantly kind of, uh, you know, uh, be aware of and just make sure that everything's running smoothly and everyone's feeling comfortable and uh, 
we are creating safe space that we are talking about. Um, I guess that was one of the um, one of the challenges for me. Kate, what were the challenges for you? I, th I think we were we were lucky on the most part uh, that it things took, I think things felt like they ran really smoothly and obviously one of the benefits of digital is sort of how you can sort of communicate really quickly um, and the immediacy of things a lot of the time but also one of the challenges is that everything even though you've got that immediacy everything does take a little bit longer as well and so to start with we were sort of having meetings on a semi-regular um, basis because we, we were sort of still um, sort of finding our our working relationship as two organisations coming together for the first time in a lockdown, having never met, like working quite challenging situations. Um, so I think that it, it was sort of the time that we, as we went on, we recognised we needed to put into that initial stage of sort of, you know, we we went from this sort of initial like meet, brainstorm, ideas, excitement to like, right, how do we work together? And so then once we'd sort of really cultivated that working relationship, which was, it was straightforward and, you know, we were all very sort of easygoing and flexible with each other. Um, once we were in that stride and definitely by the end of the project, you know, communication was really fluid. We were sort of knew we were working on the same wavelength and everything. So that was, it, that was great, but it, it was interesting to, you know, on reflection, it does, naturally it just develops more slowly um when you're doing it online so I think it was just um I guess if we're doing it again I'd probably book in a few more sort of almost informal meetings where we can we're less task focused and can more just sort of chat about our other bits of work or how we work or you know maybe even do that collaborative <laughs> session that we did for the participants with with each other really um but yeah, I, I think on the whole, we, we were really lucky and the technology held out for us and and it also enabled us to reach um, yeah, people who were coming in as guest speakers and mentors through the programme were generally able to access quite well with it being digital. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just recognising that some aspects when you're taking them online take more time. You need to have pre-meetings before meetings before meetings. <laughs> Indeed, you have everything immediately at your desk. You have all the messages delivered instantly. And at some point, it can even create a lot of pressure. And at the same time, things just uh, take longer time. And especially when it comes to developing working relationship and the good working environment, especially with a new partner. And that's something I would like to discuss in just a moment. But before then, uh, Mohammed, what were the challenges that you have faced in the project that you're working on? The, I think uh, the challenges that we faced were a bit outside of our control. I mean, in terms of communication and getting the workflow together, uh, that was very smooth. But the challenges, the first challenge was the lockdown uh, because we decided to have an ambitious, large production outdoors. And uh, the second challenge was the weather. And I feel like this we faced in both locations around that time and which kind of uh it was just there was these gaps of the lockdown is open now we could potentially shoot the lockdown is back on uh the camera people are missing the there were just kind of uh this uncertainty and at least in delhi and but i feel a similar situation in Derry that it was on and off and that kind of uh kept uh stressing the musicians who had needed space to practice for the live performance and uh i feel yeah th those were the challenges in 2021 i guess uh yeah garrett would you like to um add uh, similar as well i suppose with this uh online streaming uh, movement that's happened over the last couple of years. No, while it has been great, 
I have found it that it has been double or triple the work involved in putting on a traditional music event. So it's really, you know, labour intensive. But I suppose at the time when we done our collaboration, uh, Derry was in a full lockdown. So we had, uh, you know, the city was deserted. It was very difficult to find a venue. Um, I suppose I referred to it earlier. We wanted a venue that where we could show off the city. So we eventually found a dance studio, a contemporary dance studio, which had these large windows that overlooked the bog side, which is a famous district of our city. And uh, we were able to film and stuff, but we brought in a, a whole lighting production and stuff. But as the night, or as the day and the night filming progressed, the lights obviously beamed out across the city and the local police obviously got one that there's a party happening on the walls. So they arrived, thinking that there was a full-scale rave happening, breaking all the rules and breaking the law. But to their great disappointment, they were met with a, a socially distant camera crew and artists. But that was a challenge. But just a, the main challenge, just a, I don't know, we're two years into this pandemic, the online thing, it's almost broken me at this stage. It's too labour intensive and uh, there's a lot to be said for being in a room with people, especially an audience and the whites of your eyes and that connection that you have in a room with people. Uh, we did our first in-person events about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. It's just, it's far more rewarding being in a room with people. It's great technology and connecting with other parts in the world, but... There's nothing beats a loud sound system and sharing the dance floor with like-minded people and we need to get back to that somehow. So we've, we're have we now at a, a blended stage where we're doing some online events but hope, hoping to return to more physical and person events. Indeed, at the beginning of pandemic, I remember everyone around me going like, oh, we're going to have so much time now. What are we going to do, to do with all of this time and then it turned out that the online work and all the meeting, meetings that we have to bear and go through it actually takes so much time that now the key question is the work-life balance for many people um unfortunately we know that the pandemic is not developing evenly across the world right and in some countries we will be going back to to either hybrid or to live events finally but some countries might need to bear the consequences for a year or so or maybe longer. Um, and I wanted to ask you, just coming back to the development of the working relationship and how things are instant, but at the same time, they're taking more time. What are the key advice from you now coming with the experience that you had creating your own initiative and having a big chunk of it being conducted in the pandemic and also in the digital? How do you manage the time and the space? Um, what are the key takeaways from your side or how do you make sure that the work is pacing as needed uh, when you cannot see the people when you cannot speak to people um and how do you make sure that you are able to create a good working relationship big questions uh million uh dollar questions for for many of us would love to know three key takeaways from you and i will just give the floor to a volunteer to take over I, so I'm going to jump in right here and uh, just say that while all the challenges happened and while all of these things were going on, we entered a second wave of lockdown right after our collaboration. And that second wave of lockdown was extreme in New Delhi. And uh, we had uh, set up this fundraiser. We had set up this fundraiser in support of Give India, which is an NGO to help children in need during the lockdown during the second wave and we reached out to all our partners which we had worked with saying yo this is happening we need your help this is the situation is out of our control and thanks to our collaboration with keltronic gareth and the team members of the the studio and uh, the people who had initially performed at our at the festival participated in this fundraiser so this wasn't part of the British Council. This wasn't part of any grant. This was just human to human through our 
like exchanged kind of uh, interaction, we were able to develop like a, a real genuine connection which helped the people of India at that time through the support of all our partners. And uh, yeah, I feel like that was pro what one of the more genuine kind of outcomes that could have happened is uh, having support at such times. And I feel like that was a really important thing to highlight. Uh, I forgot the question now. No worries. Thank you for highlighting. Uh, it's important that you're sharing the important parts that really helped you in your work. Um, anyone else would like to share the key takeaways or maybe the key advice? Go ahead, Gareth. I suppose just to echo what uh, Mohammed had said there, no, I suppose of any, my main learning from this is maybe that with any project or international project, international collaboration project, I'm so glad that I spent the time researching to try and find the right partner you know we could have went for one of these big corporate festivals and collaborated with, with them and it could have been good or great or whatever but it might not have been real whereas we spent the time found Mohammed, we made the connection though even though we're thousands upon thousands of miles apart we're the same type of heads we run the same music we're and we've got the same ethos so i think that the, the takeaway for me is just the 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 best thing to do is spend extra time researching and make sure that you have the right partner because before i approached muhammad i knew that's who we needed to work with it wasn't just no i didn't cut i didn't contact anybody else i knew that's who we needed to work with because it had the it had, it had the same ethos so it's just try and find that and post all this you no know, hopefully we can make connections with people in ukraine and in other countries this and just make this lump of rock that we all live on a smaller place just and make the connection stronger and more real really thank you who is next to share the takeaway if i can share um three key takeaways <laughs> Uh, first one would be best. to have more time, if possible, not to rush things. So as uh, Kate said, just to like to have more time to just talk and like understand, you know, one another with the values and everything and just to make to have time to enjoy the process. Um, also not to feel like we're like, okay, now we have to do that and then that, that, if that's possible, of course. If that's not possible, then maybe that's a good idea to reduce the amount of lectures, the amount of, I don't know, people that you have to hire or amount of, I don't know, anything that you can reduce to um, still have the project going, but make this like a little uh, thing, quality thing, instead of just going after numbers. Um, and the thing that we had, and I think it was helpful, it was the shared file with the deadlines like uh, that everyone could access for example to having um, uh, participants hired by that date and having lecturers hired by that date so that everyone can access the file like okay the, the date is coming so um, I'll do that and, and also we had the responsible people a responsible person there so that everyone knows their responsibility then it just goes much um, easier I guess for the team thank you Thank you too. Kate, how about you? Yeah, that um, my mirror a lot of what Ira's just said um, and um, uh, around communication, really, sort of prioritising, you know, good um, and regular communication throughout it. I think that's just been so valuable. Um, the sort of structural side as well, sort of just having things organised. And we were really fortunate working with era and anesthesia that they were super organized in in the way that they were structuring things and sharing documents and everything so yeah that was that was really helpful so we were all really clear it's sort of the same in terms of timeline and everything so they're, they're the sort of really practical things but I think the most important thing is like enjoyment of it really and you know I think we've all mentioned that we had these sort of shared values across our collaboration which was sort of so important because you know you're just working with the same ethos and towards the same um intentions um and I think like we've been lucky at Brighter Sound to do quite a lot of collaborative work through internationally through the British Council um and they're all just incredible opportunities to learn and grow sort of creatively professionally and so just remembering that and finding time to 
and enjoy the process I think as well as again as Ira mentioned is yeah really really important. So it sounds that despite all the challenges, the work can be very rewarding. So the key takeaway is find, take the time to find the right partner, make sure to get to know them, to enjoy the process, to have the time uh, to just ease into the work, Be make sure to be organized, keep the deadlines, keep the regular meetings, perhaps the weekly meetings as Mohammed has mentioned earlier. But it looks like these initiatives can still bring the unique space to the artists, to the music professionals all over the world. And we're looking forward to see all the new initiatives and projects that are going to come up. Maybe perhaps out of this um, initiative, maybe you will meet somebody at Selector Pro with who you would like to cooperate and you will join into a wonderful initiative together and rock the year 2022 together as a team. Uh, this is the end of our panel. That was a very lovely discussion. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise, your know-how. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to meet you and to, to have an opportunity to moderate this discussion. Thank you. Thank you.